Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Arturo Loaiza Bonilla, a practicing medical oncologist and uh, also the Enterprise Director of Research at Cancer Treatment Centers of America uh, Global, uh, which is a network of hospitals across the United States, mostly located in Atlanta, uh, uh, Chicago, and uh, Phoenix areas, plus a number of other patient centers. Um, I specialize in GI malignancies. I'm also passionate in digital health. Um, I'm currently located in Philadelphia, and I'm also the uh, co-founder and chief medical officer of a biotechnology digital health company called Massive Bio, which helps uh, to match patients to clinical trials using technology, uh, you know, machine learning and uh, uh, other techniques and connecting patients to the right place uh, and for the right treatment at the right time. So um, today uh, I have the distinguished pleasure to actually discuss the opportunities in artificial intelligence in oncology. Of course, that's a very broad topic and um, something very close to my heart, um, but uh, a lot of unmet need there and a lot of opportunities uh, to explore. So um, I have just a few minutes. Uh, so I wanna be as succinct, but also as, you know, um, mind setting and level setting as possible so we understand where the potential opportunities are here. So as you know, uh, uh, first let's focus on cancer. So cancer is a very major unmet need. Uh, I know it sounds like a cliche word, but it is real. Um, despite the many advances that we have seen in cancer over the last uh, decades, thanks to uh, new developments, uh, input from industry and the National Cancer Institute and also efforts across uh, the world, uh, we have developed uh, novel treatments and many of them are, uh, you know, you know, the standard of care chemotherapy, which are agents that, you know, disrupt the DNA during the division of the cell and cause the cell to die, the cancer cell to die. Um, but it has some limited uh, benefit across many patients. Uh, there are some tumor types that respond very nicely to them, uh, to chemo, and they end in, into remission. But uh, currently, only half uh, of those patients benefit from, you know, surgery and uh, other interventions that are more definitive or curative. Um, and that led to the development of new drugs, such as targeted drugs and immunotherapy drugs. So targeted drugs are small molecules that are looking at the driver of the cancer, the one that light makes the cancer grow and, and, and um, stop uh, that process somehow with those molecules. Uh, so many of them are called tyrosine kinase inhibitors or other drugs that we take by mouth. And, and they're very specific to that specific driver and sometimes to the secondary mutations that uh, typically lead to resistance. So we try to cover the driver and the passenger mutations. And uh, the other drugs that are coming uh, down the pipeline are immune therapies. So basically uh, treatments that when you use them, they, uh, are, they're not attacking the cancer directly in many cases. What they do is that they stimulate your own body to attack the cancer on its own uh, using the, you know, the intelligence of you know, millions of years of evolution uh, in those immune cells and finding ways to attack the cancer uh, once we awaken the immune system to, to do it. And there are certain um, biomarkers or things that we check in the tumor or in the microenvironment or, or in, the, in the blood where we can determine which patients may benefit the most from this. Uh, and now we're leading to combinations of treatments now, combination of chemo and immune therapy or targeted immune therapy. So uh, the future is pretty open in cancer, but still we haven't been able to find which patients benefit the most. Um, so that's where artificial intelligence or data uh, comes to play. So um, uh, as you know, uh, artificial intelligence is a very novel concept, uh, at least in healthcare, even though it's been for a while. I mean, there's algorithms going back to the 1970s and before where people were trying to determine which was the best treatment option for not just cancer, but different things by uh, using data to understand the nuances and differences between patients and different characteristics to reanalyze data in real time. And for us, uh, artificial intelligence is the ability of a machine to help us, right? We don't want the machines to replace the medical care that we deliver, which is almost impossible, right? So uh, there's nothing like the, the, the talking to the patient, understanding their all the social determinants of health, the biomarkers, the prior, the prior treatment history, et cetera, to really make the right decision because um, as you all know, medicine is an art and it's also a science. So combining them two with expertise 
is what leads to the better outcomes. But what we need is less clicks and more opportunities for us to uh, you know, leverage technology and, and you know, the, the quick algorithms that could be developed uh, to help us guide decision-making processes. So, um, uh, and that's what artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, neural networks, all those things are coming uh, to healthcare uh, near to you. So uh, you may have heard about, you know, IBM Watson trying to, you know, beat people on the game of Go or in chess or Jeopardy, uh, but cancer is not as straightforward. <laughs> it has a lot of nuances and that's, uh, that's why it's so important for physicians to be involved in the process of the human supervision of those machines. So there's a few, um, you know, use cases that I feel are very relevant for this uh, pitch. Uh, one of them is for appropriate utilization uh, or biomarker discovery. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of different uh, drugs available uh, or a different combination of drugs, but we haven't been able to decode who benefits the most. A quick example at hand is the tumor mutational burden, which is uh, the number of typos uh, on the DNA per megabase that we detect when we do comprehensive genomic testing. And so we all know now that based on recent data, not all tumor mutational burdens are equal across tumor types. We thought it was maybe, you know, what we call tumor agnostic, that all tumors respond the same, but we know that's not the case. And different tumor types have different thresholds of mutational burden. The current FDA approval for one of the drugs called pembrolizumab is 10 mutations per megabase. But we know for tumor types such as colon cancer may not be sufficient. We may need, you know, a 16 number or something like that. And um, the only way for us to determine how to do it and how to really tailor the treatments for the right patients is by developing algorithms uh, or uh, digital solutions with um, the use of data and use of a strong analytics coming from uh, uh, artificial intelligence. So um, that's uh, one way, for example, decoding the tumor mutation burden is a key uh, use case that we can use by collaboration. Uh, other things that I'm, uh, we're doing, I'm currently also working in the data analytics and this company called Vidence. Um, we use robot data from uh, structure information data sets and work in a consortium based where we uh, combine uh, the data assets along with, uh, a, you know, artificial intelligence device called Simon, where um, that tool is able to look into insights of that real world data and create uh, what we call a synthetic control arm or looking at how these patients did across the board in terms of survival. Was there any biomarker that made a difference or not uh, for those patients? And in the case of TMB, et cetera, could be one of them. Um, uh, in pharmacy, in you know, like when you look at pharmaceutical companies, uh, there is a number of efforts using uh, also uh, artificial intelligence for drug discovery. So instead of having someone doing, uh, you know, a test in vitro for all these different things, they can use existing data and develop in silico trials where uh, they do a preclinical analysis of different data sets and molecules and try to use, um, you know, that data to show which candidates are the most appropriate for drugs uh, to uh, targeting oncology uh, or finding ways of overcoming resistance that develops after the use of a targeted drug. So uh, that's a, a very important uh, new development. Uh, other one close to my heart that I push, of course, uh, it's the use of technology for uh, processes that are already in place, but we can easily accelerate by having technology. So for example, using wearables for quick notification of side effects and using an algorithm to detect which patients are at more risk. Uh, patients who are um, already uh, test for a biomarker and you have a quick clinical decision support telling you which drug we should use based on payers, et cetera, uh, and based on where they live, where the drugs are available in the part of the world so they can get access to those drugs. Uh, that's another one. And the one that uh, we focus strongly at Massive Bio is clinical trial matching. So matching is a different word from pre-screening. So we, we think that technology can help us to do a very fine detailed pre-screening uh, and you can either be connected to electronic health record or you can do it um, uh, in a cloud-based uh, uh, basis uh, when you actually just upload a record, get them read by, you know, 
computer vision, OCR, uh, and which is optical uh, character recognition and do uh, natural language processing. You structure all the data together into the right um, data points and then compare them to currently existing data in terms of protocols and find patients for clinical trials. We know now that about three to 5% of the patients across the world uh, are actually enrolled in clinical trials. And because of that, half of the studies across the whole world don't even accrue and end up closing because of lack of patients. We know cancer has a lot of patients around that have cancer, unfortunately, and um, is, they could be benefit potentially for getting access to those clinical trials, but they are not sometimes located at the right place for the right patient or the right time, um, or they are done in a time or in, in sites that are repetitive. So we can use technology and AI to overcome those challenges, right? So we can create the just adjusting time approach where using AI, detecting a patient that has a potential diagnosis, get all these things aligned in the system, get them pre-screened, and then activate the patient's um, like closest oncology site as a just-in-time site. So the patient doesn't even have to move, but they just get the clinical trial just at their corner. Um, and technology is going to evolve uh, for that purpose. And, uh, and also using uh, um, you know, biomarkers and uh, the right approach with algorithms is going to really revolutionize the way we do uh, oncology uh, research in the United States and hopefully the world. So um, those are just uh, one of the few things that I feel we can uh, significantly improve things in delivery of care. Uh, there are others, uh, other you know, use cases um, by uh, using you know, voice recognition to develop like plans of care, integration of EHR, and having digital uh, you know, wallets where patients can carry their information around for interoperability. And we can use AI and other things um, with um, uh, blockchain technology integrated to that so we can make appropriate exchanges of information in an anonymized fashion and using things such as, um, uh, for example, Google is, use, uh, is using um, um, uh, this uh, thing called federated learning. So the federated learning is a way of deep learning where you can become anonymized and run clinical trials uh, in that setting. Uh, so something that the future is uh, looking into. So. Um, very excited to be part of that effort. I invite everyone to remain involved in research. That's the way of the future, not only for yourself, but helping many other patients to fight um, uh, cancer uh, as a disease. And hopefully we can overcome many of these lethal diseases. We don't want anyone uh, suffering from uh, those um, you know, family members or themselves suffering from loss in children or in any of our parents or anyone that, that we know. We're all affected by cancer to some extent. So um, hopefully we can continue advance this collaboration because that's the key of the future, not just living in silos or separating ourselves. We need to use technology to bring us together to fight cancer in a very effective way. And hopefully we can all come together in that way using decentralized clinical trials, artificial intelligence, and all digital solutions using wearables, drones, uh, satellites, you name it. And so uh, I invite everyone to be involved. I'm always happy to have a conversation. So you can follow me on my social media. I mean, LinkedIn. Um, also, uh, you can follow me in Twitter, Dr. Bonilla Onk. Um, and uh, looking forward to more exchanges uh, like this. Thank you so much for your time.